Well, here we are. The new year. It feels fresher somehow. There's a crispness to the air. <sighs> ah, smell that? Oh, that's... It's actually that's... Jack, are you frying something? No. No. Jack. It's oysters, okay? I'm frying oysters. Oysters. I knew it. Smells just like 2016. As I said, it's a new year, and if you're a tech nerd, which you probably are if you watch this show, you know what else that means? CES! <laughs> so much news. It's good because there's lots of news, and also bad because there's lots of news that we have to stay up to date on. We'll be covering all the highlights from here in the studio, but we also have boots on the ground in the form of Julia and Anthony, who will be tweeting and Instagramming and filming coverage of the show floor over on NCIX TV. Huge thanks to Be Quiet for making their trip possible. Also thanks to MSI for providing both of them editing notebooks and Cooler Master. As I said, you can go to NCIX TV to check out all of their coverage from the show floor. All right, to the news! I should mention, this is the news that we got to before our Netlink deadline. Like I said, we'll be trying our damnedest to keep up. Anyways, AMD announced a brand new GPU architecture called Polaris. GPUs have been kind of stuck at the 28 nanometer manufacturing process for years, and Polaris will finally move it to the FinFET 14 nanometer process, which will bring big improvements in power consumption and performance per watt. Polaris will support hardware H.265 encoding, DisplayPort 1.3, and finally, HDMI 2.0, which supports 4K at 60 FPS, something that was noticeably missing from last year's Fury graphics cards. In a demo, AMD compared a Polaris-based card against an NVIDIA GTX 950 playing Battlefront at medium settings and 60 FPS, and AMD's card consumed about half the power of the green teams. With a focus on low power, we'll probably see Polaris launch in lower-end cards and notebooks first, with higher-end models coming later on. Not to be outdone, NVIDIA came flying out of the gates with a branding scheme for VR-ready PC components. They're calling it GeForce GTX VR-ready program. Okay, not as exciting as a new architecture, but they'll probably have a lot more stuff to announce tonight since that's when their press conference is, so... Next, Acer announced a bunch of stuff. Among them, new monitors, including the H7, which features a USB Type-C port, so you can use DisplayPort via USB. It looks like it's being set up to work well with Acer's Liquid Jade Primo, the Windows 10 phone launching soon that supports Windows 10 Mobile's Continuum feature, with, which lets you use Windows 10 like a desktop on a phone. Acer also announced some updates to their laptops. The upgraded Aspire Switch 12S also has USB Type-C, and the P648 features the new 802.11 AD Wi-Fi. They finally moved on from BC! <laughs> and just for kicks, they threw in a new rugged Chromebook and fancier all-in-one Chrome base, if Chrome OS devices can be fancy. Lenovo came out swinging with a complete refresh of their popular X1 line of laptops, but they're now expanding it to tablets and an all-in-one as well. The ThinkPad X1 Carbon is thinner, lighter, and more powerful than ever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did anyone just hear Apple just there? The ThinkPad X1 Yoga is basically a carbon with a reversible tablet mode and an included stylus. The ThinkPad X1 Tablet, on the other hand, is quite interesting. It's a Surface Pro type of affair with a kickstand, keyboard, and modular add-ons, including an extra battery module, presenter module with a Pico projector and HDMI port, and a 3D imaging module with an Intel RealSense camera. The X1 branding now extends also to an all-in-one, the ThinkCenter X1. That's supposed to withstand 10 years of dust. So that's it, fire your cleaning lady. You don't need her. And the Think Vision X1 is a 27 inch monitor with an edge to edge display that also features a USB Type C port. What's up, Acer? Oh, and they also have the ThinkPad 13, which can be set up with Windows or Chrome OS. And Lenovo updated their workstation line of laptops with beastly specs as well. All right, on to Samsung. They haven't announced a ton of stuff yet, but we'll definitely see more as the show goes on. They did reveal the portable SSD T3, a slightly larger version of the USB powered model, which now supports Type C and capacity up to two terabytes. They've also got the HWK950, a soundbar that works with Dolby Atmos vertical audio. Got to do a tech tip on that because I don't really know what that is. And there's a fancy fridge with cameras, speakers, and a big old touchscreen. Okay, yep, Samsung, you, you got the rest of the week. Let's see some better tech things than Skyping fridge. Pfft. 
LG is kickstarting to focus on 8K with the UH9800, a 98-inch monster, and they've also got some upgraded 4K TVs at the show, but they could also be showing off something more interesting, a rollable OLED display, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Oh, that's... That's it for LG. Well, here's some non-CES quick bits. Oculus Rift pre-orders will officially begin January 6th, so prepare to leave this reality and transcend physical existence. Shh, don't be scared. You'll just look like a dork, that's all. The Wi-Fi Alliance has approved a new low-power Wi-Fi standard that uses the 900 megahertz wireless band. It's known as 802.11AH, ah! or HALO, like AH backwards and then low power. Well, hello there. MSI is making their X99 and Z170 motherboards more flashy with carbon fiber and RGB LEDs. Dang, them some pretty mobos. Lyft is finally standing up to Uber by partnering with GM to make a network of self-driving cars. Man, this would have seemed like sci-fi a few years ago, and here we are. Wow. Great job, humans. And a Windows 10 update apparently screwed up Fallout 4's performance for a lot of people. Fortunately, there's a fix, so check the forum post in the description for info on that and for sources for all, all of the stories we talked about in today's episode. Ha ha. Flagment rapide! Well, except we already did quick pits, so. Je m'excuse. Today is our first netlink of 2016 and the first in January, which means it's time to announce the winners for last month's Fans with Benefits prize. December's prize was a, where, where is it? Here it is. It was a Corsair uh, RM1000X power supply. Big thanks to Corsair for supplying us with it. So without further ado, the winner is, drum roll. <laughs> Rob Cruz with the comment, Central Master Pack? I don't know what you're referring to, but I, I, I like your enthusiasm. Congratulations, Rob! We'll send a message to your YouTube inbox so you can claim your prize. The link will be in the description in case you don't know where that is. And now, for this month's prize. This one's a doozy, guys. Adata really pulled through and sent us a 480 gigabyte SX930 SSD to give away. Whoa! Look at it! It looks so awesome! We don't have it here because it's in Anthony and Julia's office and they locked it when they left, so thanks guys. If you don't know, Fans with Benefits is just our way of saying thank you for all of your guys' support over the years. All you gotta do to enter is subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips and comment on any video from a given month, any video. We pick a random comment every month and give away a new prize. So if you want a chance to win this bad boy, there it is right there. Get your comments in. All right, guys, that's it for this very long episode of NetLinked, but the kickoff to CES is always kind of crazy. Click here to watch more videos, follow us on social media over here, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. And click here to subscribe to NCIX TV, our second channel where Anthony and Julia will be uploading their CES escapades. And while you're there, you can ask them why they didn't bring us with them. It's fine, it's fine, I, I, I don't care. It's no big deal, you know, I'll just, I'm just gonna go and, uh, Watch my Twitter feed for a while, I guess. Hope they have fun. <laughs>